Good morning and welcome. I'm Mark Hudzik, a member of the Roanoke Regional Chamber Board of Directors and chair of the Public Policy Committee. And uh, I have to tell you, after the last three days, what a beautiful morning. And I have a, about a 45 minute commute. And I know we're gonna talk about a lot of things today, but you know, it's such a beautiful morning. And I thought about what this special weekend is, and we're gonna talk about that later. But for us, to have the ability to choose our elected officials, choose where we want to go to church, choose where we want to go to school, choose where we want to work. We are a very privileged nation, and I, and I think I thank a lot of folks in this room for that today, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this year's State of the County Address presented by Roanoke County Board of Supervisors, Chairman Joe McNair. Our public policy committee works tirelessly throughout the year, ensuring we're on top of local, state, and national issues that affect all of us. The Chamber's mission is to promote, stimulate, and improve business by providing referrals, connections, influencing public policy, and helping small business grow. We are grateful for our partnerships with the government and community leaders and the many successes we have shared through our regional efforts. And I have a committee, and a lot of them are here today, the Public Policy uh, Guest Committee, that they kind of go, you know, throughout the year, they work really hard, especially when sessions end. If they could stand and be recognized and just give them an ovation. If you're here with the Public Policy, and Rebecca, that includes you as well. But all my public policy, these folks meet monthly, and then while we're in session, they meet every Friday. Thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Roanoke County has had its fair share of accomplishments this year, and there are many, many exciting things on the horizon for the county, many of which we will hear about today. Before I introduce our first speaker, let me take a moment to thank Green Ridge Recreation Center for hosting this event and also recognize our sponsors, and without them, this would not be possible. Appalachian Power, Carillion Clinic, Cops, First Citizens Bank, Poe and Crunk Real Estate Group, RGC Resources. Thank you, folks. Again, without you, it wouldn't be possible. Our first speaker is Chairman of Roanoke County Board of Supervisors, Joe McNair. Joe is a native of Cleveland, Ohio, and a graduate of the University of Virginia with a degree in finance and in accounting. He is a licensed CPA and the owner of Katie's Ice Cream and Chocolates and the Salem Ice Cream Parlor. Mr. McNair is beginning his fifth term on the Board of Supervisors where he served as chairman in 2000, 2003, 2006, 2014, and 2017. He has served on the Roanoke Valley Economic Development Partnership the Roanoke County Audit Committee, the Roanoke Valley Allegheny Regional Commission, the School Construction Committee, and the Western Virginia Regional Jail Authority. He and his wife, Cheryl, have five children. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce Chairman Joe McNair. Good morning and Welcome, as we heard, it's a beautiful fall day. We're gonna have a beautiful winter night. Uh, but it is just beautiful out there. There's so much going on, just the fact that you all took the time to be here means a lot to all of us. You all are what make Roanoke Valley great. Let me offer my thanks to the Chamber of Commerce for their ongoing support of this event. Joyce Waugh and our friends at the Chamber are as committed as we are to the positive growth and development in the Roanoke Valley. And I want to thank them for everything they do. We're all, you all are special, but we have a number of very special guests I would like to recognize. You learn long, learn early in this business, you don't really want to be the one to recognize a special guest because somebody's left out. But uh, we'll go ahead and give it a shot. Gwen Mason, if you could also hold your applause till the end. Gwen Mason, representing the office of Senator Tim Kaine. 
Christine Broughton, representing the Office of Congressman Goodman, or Goodlatte, excuse me. David Suterline, a senator in the 19th District. Greg Habib, delegate for the 17th House District. Barry Thompson, Vinton Town Manager. Brad Gross, Vinton Town Mayor. Janet Scheid, Vinton, Vinton Town Council. Jane Johnson, Salem City Council. Kevin Hutchins, Roanoke County Treasurer. Bob Cowell, Roanoke City Manager. Sherman Lee, Roanoke City Mayor. Anita Price, Roanoke City Vice Mayor. Bill Bespich, Roanoke City Council. Michelle Dykstra, Roanoke City Council. John Garland, Roanoke City Council. Brent Robertson, Franklin County Administrator. Gary LaRue, Botetourt County Administrator. Did I get most of them? <laughs> if we could give them a round of applause, thank you for being here. I would also like to take a moment to acknowledge my fellow board members, Vice Chair Martha Hooker from the Catawba District, George Acid from the Cave Spring District, Al Bedrosian from the Hollins District, and Jason Peters from the Vinton District. Give him a round of applause. Thank you to all of you for your commitment to our county and the work you do every day on behalf of our citizens. In January, we will welcome Phil North to the board to represent the Hollins District. Phil, if you could stand up and we could please give Phil a warm welcome. <laughs> Phil will be replacing Al Bedrosian, and we will certainly miss Al's presence on the board. Phil will make a great addition to our board and I look forward to work, working beside him to serve the citizens of the Roanoke Valley. We have many wonderful partners to work with in our community. Thank you for being here and thank you for the excellent relationships we have developed as we work to improve the Roanoke Valley. Thank you too to our friends with the Regional Partnership, Visit Virginia's Blue Ridge, the Regional Commission, Roanoke Blacksburg Technology Council, the Airport Commission, the Water, Broadband, and Resource Authorities. I appreciate you being here and everything you do. Let me take a moment, if I could, to acknowledge Roanoke County Administrator Tom Gates, Assistant County Administrator Richard Kaywood, Assistant County Administrator Dan O'Donnell, and there are many other staff members in attendance today. From our department heads who manage our services, Debbie Jacks, Greg Craig, and Amy Whitaker, who helped put this presentation together, and all the numerous people that work so hard on this, on this presentation this morning. Those on the front lines who work every day to improve the quality of our community, thank you for everything you do. You are all exceptional public servants. And finally, I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to our military veterans. As you know, tomorrow is Veterans Day, a time when we honor those who sacrifice so much to serve their country. Because of their service, we are able to live in a better country, safe and free. If we have veterans in the room today, could you please stand so that we might recognize you? Thank you for all you, you do for our country. As you know, Roanoke County boasts an outstanding school system that can compete with any across the country. Their success attributes to the livability of our community. I take pride in the relationship that I and the board has with the school board and staff. At this time, I would like to invite Roanoke County School Board Chairman Tim Greenway to join me on stage. Mr. Greenway is a native of Vinton. He was elected to the Roanoke County School Board in November 2015 and served as board, board Vice Chair in 2016 and Chairman in 2017. Please welcome Chairman Greenway, who will give us an update of the important work occurring in our school system today.
Thank you, Chairman McNamara, and thank you to the uh, Regional Chamber for having us. Uh, I'd like to also uh, thank the Board of Supervisors for all they do for us as well. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Tim Greenway, Benton District Representative and Chairman of the Roanoke County School Board. It's my pleasure to speak to you this morning about the state of Roanoke County Public Schools. I say it's a pleasure, but actually I've been dreading this moment since the day I was named Chairman. <laughs> so public speaking is not my forte, so if I trip over a few times, please bear with me. But Mr. Fuzzy Minix gave me a great piece of advice before I came up here. So he says, if you stumble or if you forget something, just lie. You're a politician. <laughs> so so I, thank, I thank you, Mr. Minix. I thank you. I'd like to introduce the other members of our school board that are with us this morning. First is Jason Moretz from the Windsor Hills District. Jason is also serving as vice chairman this year. Thank you, Jason. Yes. Mr. Mike Ray from the Cave Spring District. Thank you, Mike. And Don Butcher from the Catawba District. Thank you, Don. And I'd like to say uh, it's a wonderful board. Uh, you know, we've become friends, and I think we work well together. Um, just enjoyed uh, Mike's kind of been like a mentor to me. Jason's become a friend, and Don has become a friend. So, so I, I think we've got a wonderful board. This morning, I'd also like to welcome and congratulate David Linda from the Hollins District on his election on Tuesday to the school board. David, we look forward to working with you. Thank you. Unfortunately, Jerry Canada, current member from the Hollins District, could not join us this morning. Jerry decided not to run for re-election, and so his time with us on the school board will come to a close at the end of the year. He joined the school board in 1992, has served as the Hollins District representative for 25 years. I want to take a moment and thank Jerry for more than two decades of service to the students, staff, and parents of Roanoke County Public Schools. Not what an accomplishment. I'd also like to welcome a few members of our school administration that are with us this morning. First, we have our superintendent, Dr. Greg Kilo. Thank you. Also joining us is Dr. Rebecca Eastwood, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. And we have Penny Hodge, Assistant Superintendent of Finance and Operations. Can we give them a round of applause? One last person, as I've already mentioned, I'm a little nervous up here, and I want to give special recognition to Chuck Leinberger, who coached me this week, who gave me a, a wonderful speech to work with, and so I thank you, Chuck. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Finally, as Chairman McNamara mentioned, tomorrow's Veterans Day. Right now, several of our schools are holding events to recognize our veterans. These celebrations have become an annual tradition for many of our schools, and I'm proud that our staff and students take the time to honor and recognize those serving our country. When you stop to think about it, our military services are so effective because they work together as a team. Schools are no different. Our staff is, working, or is coming together as Team Roanoke County. While our schools may compete against each other on the quarter field, and I'll be the first, first one to cheer on the Terriers from William Byrd. When it comes to instruction, we are one team, Team Roanoke County. And Team Roanoke County is winning. Take a look at the results from the class of 2017. This year, more than 94% of our seniors graduated on time. This is one of the highest on-time graduation rates in the region and the state. Nearly 85% of our graduates sought further education. Our graduates have earned about $12 million in scholarships and more than 1,500 industry certifications, certifications that can help our students secure good jobs in the future. In addition, Roanoke County Schools outperform both state and national averages on SAT and ACT tests. Team Roanoke County keeps on winning. Once again, every school in Roanoke County is fully accredited by the Virginia Department of Education. And this is something that gets tougher every year as we're finding out on the board. We're especially proud because our schools earned accreditation without the need for a lot of retesting or without relying on the three-year average that some, some districts rely on. We're especially proud because our schools earned accreditation 
without those retests and, and the three-year averages. We saw some remarkable improvements in math and reading at some of our schools that are struggling in those areas. Team Roanoke County came together to find solutions to help students learn and succeed, and now we're seeing the results of that collaborative effort. The Virginia Department of Education is taking notice. This year, three of our schools earned the Virginia Board of Education Excellence Award, and seven schools earned the Board Distinguished Achievement Award. Also, Roanoke County Public Schools, as a district, earned the Distinguished Achievement Award. Our students and staff are earning amazing recognitions at the national, state, and regional level. On your table is a handout highlighting the accomplishments of our schools over the past year. I hope you will take pride in the hard work our students and staff put in each and every year. And I can't emphasize enough what our staff does and how qualified and how dedicated they are. Roanoke County has earned a reputation as an outstanding community for learning for these reasons. For 15 years, we've been named one of the best communities in the nation for music education. Niche website has ranked Roanoke County Public Schools as 13th overall best school district in Virginia and the 10th best place to teach in the state. This year we received the Silver Award for Best Places to Work in the Roanoke Valley by the readers of Roanoke Magazine. Education in Roanoke County is an outstanding value. When compared to the rest of the state, Roanoke County spends less per pupil than most in the region and we're also proud of that that we get the most performance we can. When you combine this with academic performance, we're among the best districts in the state. Our students are outperforming students in Northern Virginia, Tidewater, and Richmond. Only one out of 132 districts statewide have higher academic performance with lower pupil spending. One key reason to our continued success is how we approach education. Our comprehensive plan is looking at the whole student, not just the test scores. State and federal regulations require us to test. However, we are focusing on helping our students develop the skills they need to be successful in whatever career path they choose. Those skills are known as the five C's, and we talk about these a lot. Communication, collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, and citizenship. We want our students to be problem solvers, to be innovative, to be researchers. We want our students to not just have knowledge, but to be able to apply that knowledge. To, this makes our students become authentic learners. In fact, that's where you will see some changes in how we're teaching our students. Where are the jobs today? Maybe not where you think. About 60% of the jobs that are available today do not require a four-year college degree. Some may not even require a two-year college degree. What kind of jobs, you ask? Electrician, plumber, programmer, medical technician, nurse, construction, manufacturing, mechatronics, carpenter, welder, mason, and many more. We're helping our students, our parents and our students, identify the career pathways that our students are interested in and then determine what education is needed to be successful in that career. What we're finding is that our students need to focus on learning certifications along with higher level degrees so that we get both. Let me ask you a question. When you were a junior or senior in high school, did you know what you wanted to do with your life? And if so, are you still doing that? Oftentimes we find ourselves doing something different than we originally set out to do. Now there's nothing wrong with, with going to college to earn that bachelor's degree. We encourage it. That's a great option, but it's not the only option. Our goal is to help our graduates become opportunity ready, ready to take advantage of whatever opportunities come their way and to have necessary knowledge and skills, even if different opportunities come later on. Let's look at just a few ways we're preparing our students to become opportunity ready. We are developing the profile of a graduate. What knowledge and skills does a graduate need to master before he, he or she leaves high school? How do they obtain that knowledge? How do they learn those skills? We're helping our students answer those questions every day. We're very proud of our registered apprenticeship program. 
We're partnering with the Western Virginia Water Authority to create a paying, to create paying apprenticeship opportunities for juniors and seniors to work toward earning key certifications in the water treatment industry while they're still attending high school. We especially want to thank Mike Altizer from the, West, from the Water Authority Board for all his guidance and support. Mike, would you stand and be recognized? Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. By the time these students complete the program, they will have the knowledge, skills, and necessary certifications and, and licensure for high-paying career without incurring student debt at the same time. We're working now to develop more apprenticeship opportunities for our students and with other companies and organizations, we hope you'll consider partnering with us. We're looking for more opportunities for our students to earn other certifications. We're also very proud to announce we're expanding our opportunities in the healthcare field. Last year we told you about our new emergency medical technician program at BCAT. It's been a huge success this year. We added a second level class to provide more advanced EMT instruction. Today I'm very proud to announce that we are starting a new nurse healthcare pathway program in partnership with area healthcare providers. We've known for years that our students want to learn more about healthcare and we've been working to develop healthcare pathway programs for several years, like our current EMT program. I'm very pleased to announce that students will be able to register for this new nurse healthcare pathway program this winter to start next year. And this is just the beginning. We are working on even more opportunities in the future. Team Roanoke County is more than just schools. We are very proud and thankful for the close relationship we have with the Board of Supervisors and with Roanoke County government. It's been said many times that our schools are the crown jewel of Roanoke County. We're thankful that our friends in the county government have helped us make sure that the jewel stays polished. The school board and the board of supervisors have a revenue sharing agreement that has helped us flourish and grow together without any discord or conflict. Lately, we've been working very closely with Roanoke County of Economic Development on several workforce development initiatives, including the Registered Apprenticeship Program. These are just a few of many examples of how Roanoke County Public Schools and Roanoke County are working together to provide efficient services for our students and parents. With more than 2.6 million square feet of building space, our facilities are a huge investment of taxpayer dollars and we need to make sure we're maintaining those facilities so they last. The school board has worked with Board of Supervisors to fund a comprehensive maintenance plan to make sure we're competing, completing necessary maintenance projects in a timely fashion so as to extend the life of our facilities. At the same time, we recognize that after many years, of some facilities will need more extensive updates and renovations. We've created a capital improvement plan in partnership with the Board of Supervisors so that we can jointly develop long-range plans for improvements at school facilities and to do so with fiscal responsibility. Speaking of improvements, we've been busy making improvements at our schools and we're planning for more improvements to come. For years, William Byrd High School and William Byrd Middle School have dealt with limited field space for PE classes and athletic activities. Over the summer, we, install, we installed new artificial turf and new practice fields so that our students and athletes have reliable, safe field that can hold up to the heavy usage and it looks incredible. At K Spring High School, we're putting the final touches on the design plans for an extensive renovation and expansion that will begin next summer. This will be a big project to renovate a school building that is 50 years old. I know Mr. Ray and the entire K Spring community can't wait for this project to begin. As you can see, the future is bright at Roanoke County Public Schools. We're working every day to provide the best learning opportunities for our students and the best staff around. I hope you will consider becoming a part of, Roanoke, of Team Roanoke County. You have workforce needs and we have students looking for career opportunities. Sounds like the great beginning for a partnership. 
And now I'd like to welcome a great partner and a friend to the Roanoke County Public Schools. Ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors, Mr. Joe McNamara. Thank you. Thank you, Tim, for sharing with us the accomplishments achieved over the last year, and thank you for your leadership. As I was thinking about the topic of this address, the idea of transformation played repeatedly in my mind, likely because I've been on the board for some time now and witnessed a tremendous amount of transformation in our community, in our government, and indeed in our society. Today, I would like to spend just a few minutes exploring the changing marketplace, how Roanoke County is preparing for the change and adopting to the changing marketplace, and then some of the challenges that Roanoke County is going to face going forward that we need to, that we need to conquer. The explosive and expansive impact of technology has done much to transform our world. The rise of companies such as Amazon, Google, Facebook and others have fundamentally shifted markets and altered the very construct of our communities. So much change has occurred in the past 20 years, I wonder if we would even recognize ourselves back then. Think about it. A short 20 years ago, if you were on the internet, it's highly likely you were utilizing America Online. The transformative power of technology and the effect it has had on our society cannot be overstated as it has changed us and continues to change us. It alters the way we seek and consume goods and how we spend our free time. Our physical environment and the way we interact with each other has changed. We are now connected in new and extraordinary ways. 20 years ago when I was first elected to the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors, if I needed something for my family, I would get in the car and drive to the store perhaps a Sears store. Today, I can sit at a computer, bring up an Amazon website, select from an enormous number of options, and have it delivered directly to my house, usually within two days, and in some markets, four hours. 20 years ago, most of us lived close to our place of employment. Today, we can live anywhere, many of us, because our work can be accomplished remotely. Technological innovation has affected commuting patterns as well as retail and commercial development. It has inspired entrepreneurs and created opportunities in places where opportunities didn't previously exist. The economic impacts of technology have also been startling. 20 years ago, Sears was a profitable international department store, second only to Walmart in terms of U.S. sales. Today, Sears is on life support, having closed more than 80% of their stores and relying on the personal wealth of their chairman to stay in business. 20 years ago, believe it or not, Google and Amazon were startups with little market value. Alibaba didn't exist, and Apple had a market cap of less than $2 billion. Look where they are today. Apple is now the most valued stock in the world, and every mayor in America is doing somersaults in an attempt to attract Jeff Bezos and the second Amazon headquarters to their community. I mention this to illustrate that the speed of change is almost incomprehensible and surely unpredictable. So how is Roanoke County changing for the new economy? We are not a booming metropolis, and many of us are glad about that but we are not immune to change. Think about how Roanoke County has evolved over the past 20 years. Gone are the days when our local governments argued and took advantage of each other. We now live in a time of cooperation between local governments, a shared sense of community, and an understanding that our futures are indeed tied together. Today we plan together, share resources, and support each other's efforts. We have to. Our citizens expect it, and our constantly changing world demands it. 20 years ago, we were trying in Roanoke County to manage an overcrowded school system while devising plans for renovating and expanding schools to accommodate a growing student population. Today, we heard from Chairman Greenway, 
We are preparing for the renovation of K Spring High School, the last of the major projects identified in the Blue Ribbon Commission study completed 20 years ago. And Mike Ray is here, was chairman of that commission back in, back in the day. And we wonder how shifting age demographics and declining enrollment in the county will impact our future schools. 20 years ago, simply having the facilities was our challenge. Today, it is not about numbers, but about making sure our facilities are capable of meeting the 21st century learning needs of our students. 20 years ago, we had no formalized county and school capital improvement program and carried a debt load of greater than 3% of assessed value. Today, we have a fully funded capital improvement program and carry a debt load of less than 2% of assessed value. 20 years ago, we had a Democratic majority on the Board of Supervisors. As the saying goes, the only constant is change. Let me talk for a few minutes about how Roanoke County is adapting to change to better serve our citizens. On your tables, you will find Roanoke County's newly published Community Strategic Annual Report. It is a reflection of what citizens desire for their community. You will see in detail the progress the county has achieved toward building a better Roanoke County for the future. There are a few things as important to our county and our community than the continued growth and development of our local economy. It is hard to even imagine a future Roanoke County and Roanoke Valley without robust economic growth and increase in population. Over the last few years, Roanoke County has begun to rethink the way we encourage that expansion. While incentives for business attraction and development continue to be important aspects of our economic development strategy, we have now, more importantly, refocused our approach to consider the attractiveness of our whole community. To that end, we have emphasized efforts like the 419 Town Center and Explore Park, which will undoubtedly contribute to our economic growth, but will also add immeasurably to developing an attractive lifestyle that will benefit both our current and future residents. We have made the necessary investments in our infrastructure, which now includes public broadband, to ensure our competitiveness with other regions of the country. This also ensures that our community can support the emerging entrepreneurs and businesses that need this technology. I am proud to say that just a couple of weeks ago, we completed and opened for business Roanoke County's 25 miles of high-speed data infrastructure. We now have 75 miles of fiber available in our valley to serve our expanding commercial base and offer new opportunities for competitiveness in this market. However, infrastructure is just one component. A growing and educated workforce is also needed for business growth. Through the good efforts of many in the valley, including our school system, the Virginia Western Community College, we are working hard to ensure our young people have opportunities for rewarding and prosperous work right here at home. Every young person in the valley should have a ready-made and affordable path for success should they choose to follow it. Through collaborations with the schools, colleges, and businesses, we are creating the workforce of tomorrow. I applaud the good work that is currently underway in our school systems to align high school career and technical education with our community college curricula. I appreciate the real world learning that is occurring through the apprenticeships programs at the Western Virginia Water Authority that we just heard Chairman Greenway discuss. These are some of the ways Roanoke County is meeting the changes going forward. As we consider our bright future, we must also be aware of the challenges that are before us as a community. A few weeks ago, the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors passed a resolution calling for a concerted effort to address the health care needs of our citizens. As I am sure many of you are aware, in the past few months, the Roanoke and New River Valleys were dangerously close to having no health care provider to meet the needs of some 70,000 people that are insured outside of group plans. Only at the last minute, thankfully, Anthem decided to remain in the exchange market and provide that service, although at a significantly higher cost. Had they not done so, Southwest Virginia would have been the only place in the country to have no service provider. This is serious. Does not matter what opinions you might have of the Affordable Care Act or how health care should be provided to our citizens. 
What matters is that our region has sufficient and appropriate health care available. We risk losing our entrepreneurs, small businesses, and citizens to other parts of the country where that health care is both affordable and available. This is not an outcome we can tolerate, and so I once again ask that our state and primarily federal officials, representatives, work diligently to address this problem. Locally, Roanoke County faces the ever-increasing needs of our children enrolled in Children's Services Act. In the past few years, these costs have skyrocketed, adding more than a million dollars on an annual basis to our budget. These costs are driven by the rising number of students who can no longer be accommodated in traditional public school settings. Increasing numbers of our children are being placed in private day schools where they receive support for behavioral health issues. In Roanoke County, the cost of providing that service in a private day school setting is approximately three times the cost of providing the, the services in being educated in a public school. In the past three years, we have experienced a 34% increase in the number of students requiring private day school placement. Now, our social work professionals tell us increased severity of mental health diagnoses, more incidence of drug abuse in the home, and better advocacy for children who need specialized services are all reasons for the rising costs of this program. I do not know how best to confront this issue. I do know we have a number of exceptional people working in county government, the school system, and throughout the region to help clarify the causes and develop appropriate and reasoned solutions. You know, this issue is not unique to Roanoke County. It's happening all around us in the entire region, and it affects the entire region. And the solutions will require the efforts of government, schools, legislative leaders, and parents all working together. We must give this issue the awareness it deserves and develop solutions that effectively and efficiently address the needs of our children. Another grave concern affecting our community and our country is, is facing is the number of op overdose deaths due to opi opioid drug use. The White House just two weeks ago declared the opioid crisis a national public health emergency. In 2015, Virginia had 820 deaths related to all types of opiate drugs. The reality of this epidemic is also right here in the Roanoke Valley. Our police chief reported recently that in the first 10 months of this year alone, the number of overdoses in the county is now double the, the number for all of last year. I applaud our police department, school system, and the Prevention Council for their determination in fighting this epidemic through targeted enforcement and public education programs. However, this is a tragic problem that must be kept top of mind as it continues to impact our families, our communities, and the economy. As you know, our economic futures in the region are tied together. So it is also the case that our economic future is connected to the Commonwealth. For many years, we have seen the steady degradation of Virginia's ranking for business investment. There is no singular cause. Certainly, greater competition from other states, the impact of federal sequestration, and the recession have all impacted our standings. For the Roanoke Valley, we need leaders in the Commonwealth to foster economic expansion and to work cooperatively with our regional partnership and economic development offices to give the region the opportunity for growth that it deserves. A comprehensive, integrated economic development strategy by the state that recognizes regional strengths and weaknesses is critical to creating the opportunities for everyone. A strategy that supports economic cooperation rather than competition between the regions is to our advantage. Most importantly, a plan that goes beyond the identification of our economic problems and offers viable workable avenues for the Roanoke region to become a full partner in the future growth of the Commonwealth is the outcome we seek. As our state leaders consider how to reestablish the economic vitality of our Commonwealth, I ask that Southwest Virginia, and the Roanoke Valley in particular, be recognized for the potential, our potential contribution to the fiscal stability of the Commonwealth. I ask that our representatives be at the table when we are discussing new initiatives 
and business infrastructure discussions take place. As I conclude, let me say for certain that we have our challenges. But we are resourceful and we have one very significant and important advantage over everyone else in the state. We work together. We work together to meet the challenges and changes before us. We work together to lift each other up. We work together for our citizens. Show me another place in Virginia where the cooperation among jurisdictions and the focus on common objectives is as great as, is, as it is right here. I suggest that no others compare. Let me leave you with this final thought. It is a quote from Robert Goddard, an American rocket pioneer, pioneer. It is difficult to say what is impossible. For the dream of yesterday is the hope of tomorrow. It is difficult to say what is impossible. For the dream of yesterday is the hope of tomorrow. That quote needs to be changed. <laughs> Let me try one more time. <laughs> or perhaps we can just read it. <laughs> what is so interesting about that quote is that it was made during a high school graduation speech in 1904. What was true then is equally true now. Let us use our shared vision, our ability to cooperate, and our desire to improve our quality of life. This is how we will overcome the challenges that remain. Thank you to everyone who works every day to make Roanoke County and the Roanoke Valley the wonderful place that it is. Thank you for coming. Wow. Um, thank you for the excellent updates, Chairman McNamara and Chairman Greenway. And a couple things that I heard many times over um, was local collaboration and cooperation. And thank you for that. That is so important as we continue to attract new businesses to our area. To the schools, your work, and to the county as well, because I heard it there as well, and to the career pathways, that's such an important topic right now. And I know we're working at many levels, whether it's Richmond, whether it's the chamber, whether it's county government, but career pathways is important. And it's up to us as a community to send that message to our students because they're going to be the ones that are going to be here tomorrow when we're all sitting back in our retirement and, and they're going to be the community leaders. Um, I know the chamber looks forward to working with the county and the school system on important initiatives for the county and the region and the business community. I'd also like to echo my thoughts on the veterans. Um, my grandfather was my hero. Um, he climbed the wall in Normandy and he had Two fa he has two most favorite days of the year. Number two was the first day of hunting season, and, and number one was Veterans Day. For more than 50 years, he would get up at 3 a.m. to put his tie on, shine his shoes, and go back and meet with the, the one, his extended family that he served in World War II with. I know how important Veterans Day is to him, and I know how important it is to you, and thank you for your service. It is very important to us. As we discuss economic development and regional initiatives, I'd like to make you aware of an opportunity to make an impact on our air service. The airport is applying for a small community air service development grant to extend service to western cities, either Dallas, Detroit, or Denver. The connectivity is important to our transportation portfolio, particularly as new, expanding, and existing businesses develop markets in the western part of the country. The Chamber is asking the business community to participate by writing letters of support for the airport's grant application. If you're willing to help, please email Rebecca Gunn or Joyce Waugh. Rebecca, if you'd stand, again, be recognized. If you want to talk to Rebecca afterwards, she'd love to talk to you about it. Um, and let us, if we have a template, a letter you can use. Um, so please help us. Um, today's event will be replayed on RVTV on Thursday, November 16th and Saturday, November 18th. I'll also remind you to save the date for the 128th annual meeting of the membership on January 9th at the Hotel Roanoke and Conference Center, 
featuring the crew of Black Dog Salvage. It's going to be a wonderful event. Let me again thank today's sponsors. Without them, this would not be possible. Appalachian Power, Carillion Clinic, Cox, First Citizens Bank, Poe and Crunk Real Estate Group, RGC Resources, and also the Chamber staff. If you could stand and be recognized, they work diligently throughout the year to put these events on. Ch staff members, raise your hand. Stand to be recognized. Thank you. Again, Chairman McNamara and Chairman Greenway, thank you for today's information. Uh, just, just a lot of things that are taking place in this wonderful community we all live and work. Thank you for attending and have a great rest of your day.